Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Ask Barry V Show. I'm Barry Vanover. This is Miles Baker. Mr. Baker, this is episode 41. So you know, thank you guys for all your questions and comments about the show. We enjoy doing it, so just keep your questions coming. And uh, what's going on in the martial arts industry right now where people should be thinking or concerned with? Seems to be about Christmas, huh? Yep. Christmas time is here. I saw my first Target commercial, Christmas commercial for Target the other morning when I was watching the news. So, you know, it's uh, it's Christmas time. You know, Thanksgiving is really just a, a, a precursor to Christmas. It just gives a chance for... Uh, everybody to warm up uh, and and for for the holidays. So really with their advertising, and should you do a Thanksgiving flash sale on Facebook? Absolutely. Uh, but more importantly, uh, Black Friday flash sale, uh, Cyber Monday sale. Uh, but as far as your advertising, I think right now it's time on Facebook, at least on social media, it's time to advertise your Christmas special. So what is your Christmas special? Uh, for the premier schools, we're, we're recommending a, a, just basically our two-lesson trial program um, a, and a uniform to wrap for under the tree. Now, variations of that would be two-lesson trial, uh, two private one-on-one -on -one lessons, a month of martial arts classes, and a uniform to wrap under the tree for, what, $89, $69, $89, whatever. You know, so some of those variations, but getting that out there and start marketing it now if you wait till December 1st, believe it or not, or the first week of December, people have already purchased a lot of the gifts they're getting for their kids. Right now is when they're thinking about ideas for Christmas. So like right after you get done watching the show, it's time to put up your it's time to put up your your Christmas special. And if you're a member of our online igniter, and you can see that at maonlineigniter.com, you'll have the ad and the text and everything that goes along with that. And then of course your Christmas party for kids? Are you having a Christmas party for adults? You know, have you announced the school closings for Christmas? All of those types of things uh, for the holidays. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our questions. This week, our first one comes from Sean M. Sean M. asks, he says, I've, I've heard you speak of selling equipment packages. This might be a stupid question, but can you explain what you mean? Sure. Equipment packages are, are when we take... Um, uh, the different programs in our school, like we sell our basic martial arts program, uh, our black belt training program, our premier training program, our leadership program, and we put together equipment packages based on the curriculum that the student is going to need to be safe and be successful in that program. The, the psychology behind this is for every sport that you do, something even simple as swimming. I mean, what equipment do you need for swimming? Well, you still need bathing suits, skull caps, goggles. I'm sure there's some training equipment that you need. You, you need clothing to put on when you get out of the pool, you know, and I pick swimming because you would think there's hardly any equipment needed. You know, whether it's motocross, hockey, baseball, whatever, there's, there's equipment that goes along with it. So uh, martial arts is no different. We have lots of equipment that we can sell and package in different programs that support the curriculum, support the programs. And when people start a new activity, they want equipment. It adds to the overall purchasing experience, the overall new experience when there's a equipment that goes along with it. I mean, imagine signing up a kid for martial arts and the, all they have is the white uniform and they walk out of there, right? Some buyer's mo mo uh, remorse could actually happen, especially if they paid that in full and dropped fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 and the kid's walking out with a white uniform, that's it. But now let him walk out with his backpack, his shin guards, his his self-defense or sparring gloves, mouthpiece, t-shirt, you know, and, and, and all of that in his back. Now it feels like more of an experience. Same thing for your black belt training program. I, I still, I talk to schools when we first start consulting with them that, you know, they may even have a black belt training program, right? But they don't sell the equipment that goes along with it. They let people buy it as they need it, which, uh, you're just not going to sell as much equipment because frankly, they're not going to be around forever. They're not going to, a lot of those people won't be around when it's time to sell those, those remaining pieces. So to add to the excitement and to go ahead and have a great income generator at your school, put together the equipment that supports your black belt training equipment package and sell it when you sell the membership itself. For our goals and statistics, we say that our 
program directors should sell 100% equipment packages. If you signed up 20 new students, you should have sold 20 basic equipment packages. If you upgrade 15 black belt training students this month, you should have sold 15 equipment packages. And of course, we have a method of doing that in the enrollment conferences where it's sold. And we have a method and a system to make that easy ha easily happen. So that's what equipment packages are. And that's uh, a little bit of tips on how to, to sell those and the need for those because it is a great income stream for your, your martial arts school. Absolutely. Our next question for this week comes from Craig T. He asks, this is, what is the last book you read? What are you currently reading? And what is a book you would recommend? Yeah. What's the last book you read? I actually just started a book last night called Never Eat Alone by Keith, uh, I think the last name's Bizarri, if I'm saying that correct. And it's really good. It's just all about networking, the power of who you know. And and so I was just thinking about our clients and their, their, their students and the parents and understanding who the major connectors are in your community awesome. and, and how that can make your business a lot easier. Good. So what was the last book we read? Uh, the last book that I read was actually the revised edition of The E-Myth. I read The E-Myth years ago and... Uh, I think you you had the revised edition, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I just read it six and, months ago or something for the first time. And then I, really I reread that, and you know, the, with the with Premier Martial Arts coming into turning into a franchise, you know, that you would said there was a lot of great new information in there, and so I reread that, and and I was what the what thing I took from that book, what I was surprised is the failing percentages of independent small businesses yeah. in the U.S. currently. Yeah. It's it's forty percent within the first year. It's eighty percent of the all new businesses, independent independent businesses fail eighty yeah. percent yeah. in the first five years. Right, That's a lot of crushed dreams. Yeah, but for those people that buy into the franchising type model, their success rate is in the nineties that they'll last over yeah. five years. Yeah. So that was pretty interesting. Um, so the uh, what book am I currently reading? I'm reading the. The Pale Horseman, which is a, uh, a Viking Chronicles book. Uh, I like to go back between maybe business books and then maybe some kind of, uh, you know, fiction to get your mind going in different directions. And, uh, but as far as a book that I recommend, I don't really recommend. I have got a book on my desk that someone gave me called The Go-Giver. I haven't read it, but I'm going to read that. And it's, uh, it's a business book. So I can't really recommend The Go-Giver. But my friend recommends it, and I've got it, and I'm going to read that next. So Very cool. Good question, Craig. Yeah, so that's nice. important to always be reading and researching and so forth. So hopefully there were some ideas for you. Our next question comes from Bernard W. He asked, what do you, what do you recommend for payroll and bookkeeping software? Well, I know that uh, our office manager uses QuickBooks, right? Uh, but we have an office manager that's hired to do our bookkeeping and then they, t for all of our schools, and then they turn, she turns in that information into our accountants uh, uh, on a periodic basis for them to do our taxes. Now, for an independent school owner, I'm not sure I recommend that they do their own books. I mean, how much time do you have? How much, how many mistakes can you make? Uh, but as far as software, you can't beat QuickBooks, but, you know, let's go back to, uh, uh, the concept of, of, of bookkeeping and accounting, I believe that I, the smartest thing for an independent school owner to do uh, is to have an accountant. Do you, for example, you have an accountant that does that. Actually, you don't have an office manager. You have an, that does that. You have an accountant that does your monthly books yep. and reconciles your bank account well and does all of that, well, right? I'd pay him twice as much, you know? Yeah. So I, I would have an accountant keep your, your, your records and your, your books for you. Uh, and as far as payroll, I would have the, your accountant, that same account, do your payroll for you or go through a service like paychecks or something where you just turn in the hours and they calculate the taxes and they cut the checks and they, they send the checks out for your staff. That's probably something that I wouldn't get into. You know, we're talking bookkeeping, we're talking payroll, software, taxes. For me, dealing with so many different school owners for years and consulting, one of the main things that gets a school owner in trouble is taxes. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that can get a, a martial arts business school owner in trouble, but there is a recurring theme that I see where school owners don't pay, uh, either they don't pay taxes throughout the year, and then at the end of the year, they're hit with a big tax bill that they can't pay, and therefore it puts them in a crunch where maybe they're paying that off for years to come in payments, yeah. and which keep, puts them behind or they just don't pay taxes in general 
and get in trouble. Payroll taxes, they don't pay the proper amount of payroll taxes and that can get you in trouble uh, where interest and penalties are are implemented on you and now you're paying uh, this huge uh, bill to the IRS again for years to come. And declassifying your employees wrongly as, you know, as either 1099 or or W-2 and trying to get your instructors to be a 1099 where you don't have to pay taxes on them. And then there's an audit occurs and they find out you do have to pay taxes on them and you got to go back and pay all this back tax. Mm -hmm. So, man, you know, uh, one of my business mentors of mine years ago, very wealthy, and we're talking 30, 40 million dollars. It's untelling how much he's worth today. He's one thing he always said was pet, talked about the trouble taxes can give you. Pay your taxes. Be happy to pay your taxes because you live in the greatest country in the world, and and uh, take the tax whole concept serious. So don't sweat about. Be be happy that you're making enough money that you have to pay those that kind of taxes. You know. Now that doesn't mean don't don't get a good tax attorney or get a good accountant that can you can pay least amount of taxes, of course. Yeah. Right? But always just take care of that and make sure you don't get any type of trouble there. Nice. Our last question for this week comes from Ken M. He asks, I want to grow my adult program. Any ideas or advice? Well, I would say what I would look at your curriculum that you're teaching. You know, are you teaching a curriculum that the largest percentage of adults in your neighborhood and your area want to learn. You know, with the onset of the importance of self-defense, uh, you've got great self-defense programs like Krav Maga and Tony Blower Spear programs. And, you know, self-defense is important. Um, then the the increase in interest in mixed martial arts and, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu and MMA and all that has definitely um, the top of mind to adults Martial arts has never been greater for top of mind for adults than, than, than right now. So, but if you're teaching a curriculum that adults really aren't interested in, I mean, think about what adults are looking for. Adults are looking for a place to get fit because they're tired of the gym. Does the curriculum you teach get your adults fit? Second thing is adults are looking for self-defense. Does the curriculum you teach actually enable someone to defend themselves? You know, the the general public are, are, are pretty sophisticated nowadays on what martial art is, is self-defense oriented or what martial, martial arts is realistic. I mean, with the internet, you can find anything online and, fi- and research anything very quickly. So you got to remember that people people can find out and figure out pretty quick. So can, uh, can they get fit in your class? Can they defend themselves? And then the social belonging aspects. Adults want to feel part of something. Are you doing all the things in your school to make the adults feel special? Like we're doing a self, we're doing a workshop coming up because we do teach Krav Maga and Premier Martial Arts and kickboxing and Kali and Jiu Jitsu and things like that nature. Um, we're doing a, a, a gun safety and a force option gun uh, class. Uh, we're bringing an outside guy that's expert in tactical and personal protection and corporate protection for gun and firearms. And we're having him do it just as a way of giving back to our adults, promoting, giving the adults something fun to do. You know, I know our adults who end up after graduations going out and having dinner or they'll get together for to watch UFC fights. Are you creating that energy through your adult program? So those are some things to consider first. And then I would probably consider and look at the marketing, how you're marketing to adults. You know, we had a great, um, in our online Igniter program, <coughs> excuse me, we did a great promotion started last summer for women's self-defense workshops. I've mentioned it on the show in the past, so you could probably go back to some of the shows this summer in July and August and hear us talk about it and go over the details of that program. But I mean, we were getting record numbers of regist- online registrations for this. I'm talking in the hundreds of women would register. Excuse me. And then <clears throat> we got great percentage numbers of show-ups and signups for that. I know schools that this rein, reinvigorated their adult program from the number of women that they were signing up in that in, in just this self to free self women self defense workshops. Something that we're experimenting with, and we know also is where adults are focused on fitness. We have a program coming out, a Get Fit Challenge, that is going to be promoting our adult martial arts program through the fitness. So if you're looking at two of the main reasons adult do mar, d- does martial arts fitness and self-defense, both of those programs we've got are attacking that market, primarily for women, 
But remember, where there's lots of women working out, there'll be lots of men coming to work out, right? And then the whole word of mouth, and then, you know, the women have kids and it helps grow your adult, your children's program and, and so forth. So I would look at how you're marketing. Are you doing specific ads for your adult program on your social media? Are you hitting the right social medias like Facebook, but also Instagram for adults? So making those programs specific, are you growing your adult likes and followers on your uh, uh, Facebook page as well, right? And then are you doing any type of email drip marketing or funnel marketing separately for adults once you gather their leads from social media or from your uh, uh, website? So, you know, thinking about it of, of marketing directly to adults and where are adults at, you know, go back to old school guerrilla marketing. I used to say, why do we go into public schools and, and do school talks? Because that's where the kids are. Let's go find them where they spend most of their day. Let's go find them and, and impact them. Same thing for adults. How about calling some large companies and doing some adult self-defense workshops you know, and offering to do that for them and whether it's an income generator or not. So these are all ideas to, to spark and grow your adult program. But looking at what you're teaching, okay, and what people want to learn, the benefits that adults are looking for and how you're marketing it. All of those, you can't go wrong with considering those four things with, with growing the, that adult program. That's uh, this week's questions. That's it. You didn't get yeah. to talk a lot. I, I hogged everything no, up today. No? You sure? You don't feel bad? A little no, sad or anything? No, no, not sad no? today. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time.